You've seen the situation in Ukraine. You've seen how the world is responding. Now let me show you how the world is covering this invasion. I'm talking about the media, especially Western channels. How are they covering Russia's invasion? With blatant racism. Let me say something at the outset. As journalists, we do not filter hardships and pain. We do not see caste, color or gender. And we have stuck by this principle. When the Taliban stormed Kabul, we stood with Afghans. When Ethiopia attacked its own people, we questioned them. When unarmed black teenagers were gunned down in the US, we joined the outrage. Today, we are doing the same. We see the plight of the Ukrainian people and we have reported on their hardships. But what about the Western media? They too are reporting on the crisis, on the war, on the refugees. But they do not see hardships. They only see race, the color of your skin, the color of your hair. Let me show you exhibit number one. This exchange happened on the BBC, the so-called guardian of unbiased reportage. Listen to how their panel describes the refugees from Ukraine. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being healed. People with blue eyes and blonde hair. That is why the so-called expert on the BBC is emotional, not because the people are homeless, not because their country is being invaded, but because their hair is blonde. On social media, a lot of people are defending the BBC. They say it's a guest, not their anchor. Let me take you back to September last year. Another guest was speaking on the very same channel, South Asian expert Christine Fair. She called out Pakistan's links with the Taliban. Do you remember what the BBC presenter did? She shut her down. She said it was violating the channel's unbiased coverage. So exposing terror links is a violation. Blatant racism and white supremacy is fine. Gold standard indeed. Now for exhibit number two, NBC News from the US. Listen to this. These are not refugees from Syria. These are Christians, they're white, they're, um, they're very similar. To very similar to us. How so? Because the Syrian refugees are Muslims, their skin is darker, their hair is not blonde. So Europe does not want them. And remember, this is not being said at some white supremacy cult. This is happening on live television. Exhibit number three, CBS News, another American broadcaster, their reporter is appalled by the war. Not because there is death and destruction, but because it is happening in Europe. You know, like Iraq or Afghanistan, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So Iraq and Afghanistan are uncivilized countries. Their people are uncultured. Their regimes are irresponsible. So they deserve war. They deserve hundreds of bombs and years of occupation. What about Ukraine? According to CBS, no. Ukraine does not deserve war or hardships because Ukraine is civilized. And now for the final exhibit. This one is not from the West. It is from Al Jazeera in Qatar. This anchor simply cannot comprehend the idea of European refugees. What's compelling is just looking at them, the way they're dressed. These are prosperous, I'm loath to use the expression, these are prosperous middle class people. These are not obviously refugees trying to get away from areas in the Middle East that are still in a big state of war. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. That reporter is confused about the refugees. They look middle class. They look like Europeans. How is something so bad happening to them? Well, this is what systemic racism looks like. Do you remember the 2015 refugee crisis? Around 1.3 million people sought asylum in Europe. Most of them were from Syria, Afghanistan and Nigeria. Do you remember how the West reacted? They shut their borders, they herded the refugees like cattle and they branded them as terrorists. Back then, Western reportage was quite different. Let me show you what the BBC did. They prepared seven charts depicting the refugee crisis. Let's focus on chart number five. Which European countries are most affected? Now remember, this war was in West Asia. The bombs were dropping on West Asia, but this was the BBC's big concern. Which European countries are most affected? Now just to be clear, we welcome what Europe is doing to host Ukrainian refugees. They deserve all the help. Our question is, why just Ukraine? Ukraine is not a member of the European Union. It is not part of NATO. So what explains this level of assistance? Racism. 
You see, Ukrainians are Europeans, hence they get the red carpet, but Africans and Asians get border crackdowns and refugee camps. Western media is part of the problem, I have to say. They reflect the public mentality, their sense of European supremacy. And the problem is, governments are not doing anything to help. In fact, they're adding fuel to this fire. Let me show you what Bulgaria's Prime Minister said about refugees. I'm quoting. These people are intelligent. They are educated people. This is not the refugee wave we have been used to. People we are not sure about. We were not sure about their identity. People with unclear pasts who could have been even terrorists. That was a European head of state. He is openly calling West Asian refugees terrorists. If this does not expose Western hypocrisy, nothing does. They invaded Asian and African countries. They waged war. They committed war crimes. And when the people fled, they shut their borders. What does this tell you? That refugees were never the problem. That money or borders were not the issue. The issue was race. Think about it.